hello, my name's Richard Searle. I'm a beekeeper with the Halifax Beekeepers Association. I'm here with Iva Flatman today, and Iva's a former bee inspector. And we're in the grounds of Wentworth Castle Estate and the Barnsley Apiary. And we're going to discuss why we need to change the combs in our hives. So, what are the reasons that we need to change combs in our beehives, Iva? Well, primarily, I think the, the most important reason is that it helps to reduce the likelihood of disease occurring in the colony. By taking out old comb, you're reducing the pathogen load in the colony uh, and therefore hopefully disease won't occur. So what are the other reasons that we'd want to change combs in our beehives? Well, it makes it a lot easier to manage your bees. Mm -hmm. If the combs aren't propolised and got brace comb on them, they're much easier to, to manipulate. Uh, which is actually good for the bees, it causes them less stress and it's good for the beekeeper too because you're less likely to aggravate the bees and possibly get stung. Also it does help with spring build-up in a colony. If you imagine at the late stages of winter when the queen has started to lay there might only be enough bees in there to, to cover a, a patch of brood about the size of a grapefruit. Now if that comb isn't good worker, worker cell comb then the queen won't be able to lay in all those cells. But if it is worker cells, then she'll be able to lay in all of those and, and therefore you get more young bees uh, uh, developing early in the season and so the colony will build up a bit more quickly. So it's a good reason if you want fit and healthy bees yep. to do a comb change. Yes, it is. So what are the different methods that we can use? Okay, so firstly I suppose there's, there's a, a, a way of just changing combs in a colony just a few at a time each year. Uh, it's, it's recommended that there's a three-year cycle of brood comb in the colony, so you should be changing at least three or four frames each year. Um, you can do that just by taking out frames at the end edges of the brood box that have perhaps uh, got uh, damaged and uh, uh, they might even go a bit mouldy during the winter, but they're probably empty. Uh, so late winter you can take those out and, and insert uh, a frame of drawn comb in, in place. Uh, perhaps next to the to the brew box, ensuring of course that there's there's enough food in the colony. Um, so that's probably the, the simplest way. But it, it, there are other methods that have uh, probably some advantages, and one of those is is what we know as the Bailey comb change. So that's what we're going to look at today. Yes, that's right. Anyone can do that in their own apiaries. Yes, yes, it's it's a fairly simple technique, uh, and it's. Uh, it's a way of changing comb without uh, losing any brood in the colony, unlike uh, a more drastic measure like shook swarm, mm. which, uh, which you do lose brood. Mm -hmm. But that has its applications, uh, particularly for disease control. Yes, I think if you've gone through winter with a small colony, you don't want to lose any brood, That's do you? Right. So yes. this is the point that we normally say, let's put on our suits and go and look in the hives. OK. Iver, so we're at the first hive here. So how we make a judgment about or the size of the colony before we do a comb change? Yes, yeah, so to do a Bailey comb change you need a fairly strong colony. So by that we're talking about a, a full brew box of bees essentially. Um, this colony, the, there will be bees right across the frames uh, and brewed on about eight. It was inspected just a couple of days ago on Saturday at the apiary meeting and so we know it's, it's about ready uh, to do the operation. And, the, and obviously the time of year we were discussing earlier this important. So, what's the key uh, sort of window in the year that we're going to be doing this type of change? In an essence, the earlier the better. Uh, I, I, I would like to do a Bailey comb change in March, really, if the colony is strong enough. Now, this year the, the colonies here weren't quite ready uh, during March. We had a, a week of really good weather, which would have been ideal to do it if they had been. Um, so we've had to delay it because we had after after that week of good weather we had two weeks of, of really poor weather. So, uh, it, but in that time the colonies have built up a bit, and now they're just about ready to to do a ba Bailey comb change. Shall we open up this hive and uh, see what we've got inside? Yeah, we'll just give them a a little gentle puff of smoke. There, as you can see, we've got a, a pretty full brew box of bees. They'd be ready for a super yes, by now. They do um, look quite congested, don't they? You yeah, know. but we're, we're going to do a Bailey comb change, which will just give them a, mm. a, a, an extra brew box in place. 
So what's the first stage we're going to... Once so we've assessed the size of the colony... What's once the you've assessed the size of the colony, you, you would go through it. Let's right. say this, we went through this one on Saturday at the April meeting uh, and this brood on eight frames. And so it's ideal. Bees on, bees on virtually 11 frames. So it's ideal for a condition to do a Bailey comb change. Um, I'm just going to take off uh, this little bit of brace comb off the top of these frames because we're going to put another brew box on top of here and we don't squash any bees in between the, the two boxes. Mm -hmm. So we're putting a, a box of foundation. So we've got 11 Hoffman frames of foundation and a dummy board in the end, which is the ideal configuration. I don't like trying to squash uh, 12 frames in. So getting your equipment ready before we start this, obviously you don't want to be doing this. That's right. Making yes. this up as you go along. Yes. We should really just check that uh, the Queen isn't on the crown board. She is marked in this colony. Right. And then it's a good opportunity to, uh, to replace that crown board yeah. with a clean one. That yeah. can be taken away and scraped and uh, just uh, cleaned up. So we've got a nice clean crown board there. Okay. So is um, the age of the Queen important in this or not, not a relevant as factor? No, it, it just depends really yeah. whether the queen is, is laying well. Yeah. Uh, we will find actually what all the queens in this colony, in this apiary, except one, uh, all the colonies, I should say, have a queen of, uh, that's, that's from last year. Okay. So they're marked white. There's just one which has a, a queen from 2019, yeah. um, which is actually the next colony we're going oh, okay. to look at. Uh, so we've got a, a foundation there. Um, ready for the bees to come up and, and start to draw. But to do that, even though there's uh, probably a little bit of a flow on at the moment, we should really feed them. Right. Okay. And to do that, we use uh, strong sugar syrup. So in uh, people of my age will recognise it as two, two pounds to a pint. Right, OK. Um, I think the, uh, the metric equivalent for younger people is about uh, a kilo in 600... 25, 25 yeah, that's mils, right, yeah. something of that order. You'll be able to work it out on your phone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use the contact feeder. It's, they, they work better for this sort of procedure right. than, a, um, than, a, than the old rapid feeders. Yeah. Um, you can easily make your own just with a, a tight-fitting yeah. pail uh, and, and put some little holes, needle holes, mm. uh, with a hot wire or something like that right. through, the, through the lid, and, and that will make a, a good contact feeder. We are in Yorkshire after all. Yes, exactly. So why buy one? Yep. <laughs> so we've got some syrup here. I'm going to give them uh, a full uh, bucket. Right. So the contact feeder works on a, a vacuum, doesn't it? Otherwise the That's whole right. lot would just pour into your hive. Yes. And That's why you need a, a particularly good seal on right. the lid. Okay. And to stop it flowing out too fast to start off with, if you push the top in right. and then invert it, Okay. Virtually nothing comes out. Right. We will let just a few drops out just yeah. by squeezing it just to encourage the bees up to the feeder. Right. And that's essentially is is step one. Right. It's a good idea to put a an empty super around the feeder. So we've not moved the queen or done again like that, we nope. just, just let them just going to move. We, we're just allowing the, the bees to draw that foundation out and hopefully yeah. in a week's time the queen will actually have come up and started to lay yeah. in those frames. Okay. Um, so don't worry about not finding your queen at that stage of doing this. No, no. at this, at this stage, as long as you've, you've been through the colony you know it's queen right, Okay. you can, you can do the bailey comb change. That is the completion of stage one. Stage one completed. Yeah. So it's not onerous, it's not too difficult. It's no, as no. long as you've got all your equipment prepared beforehand. That's right, that's right. And just you've got your syrup, you've got mm. your foundation, and you've picked a nice day. Yes. Yeah. So this is stage two, yeah? Yes, that's right. We did stage one on this, as you say, a week ago, and it's ready now for stage two. So stage two, we need to check to see what's going on. So we've got our feeder there. It's been topped up perhaps, but uh, there's still a bit in there. Yeah. These are still taking the feed. Right. And hopefully 
they will have drawn out several of these frames by now. So we'll just take the uh, dummy board out. And look to see how we're getting on. Yes, there we are. We've yes, got, we've got some cone that's being drawn nicely. Yes, that's the thing you notice first of all. It's very, it's very nice, clean comb. Yes, you know, and it's. Uh, it would be nice to actually see some eggs. Yeah. Uh, because that would tell us that the queen's come up and started laying, and that's the ideal time to do stage two. Okay. And the bees have put some nectar or some nice. syrup in the top here, yeah. uh, but they have left this, this section empty, yeah. ready for the queen to start to lay. Yeah. Quite often, the queen would have come up and started laying, you'll actually find her in the top box, right. which makes the, the operation quite very easy to do. Yeah. Um, but it looks as though, in this instance, she's, uh, she's still working mainly in the bottom box. Yeah. So although I would actually prefer to, to wait until the queen is, is laying, we will do the operation uh, for the demonstration, mm -hmm. as though she, as though she was already yeah. into the top box, but they have, they have actually done quite well with the foundation over the last week. Yeah. And how much uh, syrup did you put in? It, that's um, about a what a half gallon, a two two and a half litre bucket. Um, I would normally anticipate needing to fill that up again. Right. full of bees and the yes. bees in the top box yes. so it, it's come on quite well yes um, and the frames are all got plastic ends and they're yeah. a bit piggledy piggledy some of the frames are old yeah need replacing anyway so so yeah. it's a good opportunity to do the whole operation in one go the bees are somewhat attracted to the fluffy end of the sound so I've had to smoke that put that right so we've got the Queen here, Yeah. Um, she is uh, marked green but only just, uh, most of the marking has actually worn off. Right. Notice there's one or two drones around as well, are there any issues that we have to take account when we have drones when we're doing them? I would prefer, say, pref as I said before, prefer to do the operation a little bit earlier in the season when there's less likely to, to be drones in the colony, yeah. um, but uh, given the weather and, and the, the way the colonies have built up, um, it wasn't really feasible to do it sooner. Yeah. So this queen needs to go into the top box. Yeah. So we'll just gently yeah. move her into there. Right. A bit. We put the bailey board on. Right. Now, a bailey board essentially is a queen excluder with some strips of wood around it. Oh, right. And in fact, you can just use a queen excluder and five strips of wood. Right three to enclose the sides all together and, and two smaller ones to give an entrance on one side and that just goes directly on top of the old brew box yes. so you don't have to be a professional carpenter to make this up it's just a exactly. wire it, uh, yeah. excluder yeah. and like I said three strips of it you can probably get from a DIY still and a bit of glue. Yes, yeah. yes, and um, screw it if you want. Yes, yeah. yes. But but if if you just want to use a, a framed queen excluder, and you can just rest strips of wood on. Right. And yeah. the, the weight of the, the other brew box will, will keep them in that. place anyway. Yeah. And then the box with the queen on goes on top. Right. <coughs> and then we put our crown board back on. And do we know that add another feed or we, we continue to feed yes yep. okay. making sure you've got a good seal yes invert that over yeah. and the bees will come up and take that syrup so what's going to happen now with those the bees in that main box with the queen here what's what's well, the, the principle that's going to take the the queen will be laying in that top box yeah and the brood in the bottom box will start to emerge Okay. Um, uh, over time yeah. and over over a three week period all the worker brood in there even even the eggs that have just been laid this last 24 hours yeah all that brood will have emerged and after that period yeah. you can take that box away so that's that whole brood cycle from the la very last egg she's laid in there to the time it hatches yes uh, as a bee makes away and that's the entire 
time scale you're working to. Yes, you might want to, if there's, if there's drone brood in there, you might want, might want to leave it just a few days longer. Yeah. Now the queen up in here, and she's not got a pheromone here, so there's a possibility they might sometimes throw out emergency queen cells. There is a chance, yeah. although of course you've, you, you've not really separated the queen mm. by any distance yeah. from, from the bees in the bottom box, um, but it would be a good idea in a week's time just to go through that and, and check for yeah. any queen cells and just knock any down that, yeah. that are found. There's one operation that we haven't done which we, which we need to do. Right, okay. So we, we need to ensure that the bees use the top entrance, not the bottom entrance. Uh, if they continue to use the bottom entrance, as the foragers come back, they'll give their pollen to the house bees and they'll pack it in those cells in the bottom box uh, and they might also store nectar in there and we want them to use the, the top box to take the pollen straight up to where it's needed uh, for, to, to uh, feed the young bees that are developing, developing in the top box. So we're going to put the entrance block in so that it seals off the bottom entrance yeah. entirely. So it's normal entrance block but you're just putting it out in without the opening. Uh, once all that brood has emerged in that uh, bottom box yeah. we can we can take that box away and drop the new box with the with the uh, queen in it yeah. and probably several frames of, of nice young brood yeah. down onto the floorboard. We, a good idea actually to replace the floorboard when you do that with a clean one. Yeah, okay. Gives you the opportunity to, uh, to do that and it will be ready at that point to, to put supers on right. because uh, you've got all the bees in the two brew boxes to accommodate in the hive so it will be, we'll need one or even perhaps two supers so putting on. Okay. So it's one way to do a thorough spring clean all That's the right. way through your hive. When we moved the queen into the top box you did it in a particular way sort of based on experience as a, as a beekeeper but is there a, a recommended way that people should follow? We would have hoped that the queen would have been already in that top box laying and we could have just slipped the uh, bailey board underneath and, and left her in that top box. Because she was in the bottom box we needed to transfer her into the top box and we re should really have done that by moving her onto a frame of brood. Um, but for the purposes of the demonstration we just put her in uh, because the, the queen hasn't actually started laying in, in those frames yet. So normally I would probably leave it another couple of days so the queen was actually up there and laying before I put the bailey board in. So Ivan, not every hive is always going to come through the winter sort of bursting at the seams like those other two hives. So what if you have a smaller colony? Uh, are there any other issues that you have to take into account when you're doing this, the comb change? Yes, you have to use quite a different procedure to do a bailey comb change on a weaker colony. There are one or two important differences. And we've got, we've got a colony, he colony here actually which isn't as strong as the other two. So when we say a smaller colony, how many seams of bees are we looking at? Well here we've got a colony that's on about nine frames altogether and has brewed on probably five of those. So not really strong enough to do a, a full baby cone change on. Um, but there is a, a technique we can use, and um, as I said before, BBK have produced a, another uh, little crib sheet which gives you a, a method for a weaker colony. So we're going to follow that okay. uh, with this colony. So the first thing we need to do is actually remove combs that are com empty yeah. from the colony and you can even remove uh, combs with, with stores in from the ends uh, and then we're going to compress the colony uh, with dummy boards okay. in the bottom box. So, we've so got we're just shrinking the size internally? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a, a frame here which is completely empty. So that, we'll just shake the bees off there. Both the, the, they obviously think this is a small form of bear. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so we keep going through the colony. Yeah. Again, another almost empty comb. There's there's a little bit of um, nectar in there, but that's all. Mm -hmm. well, by shrinking the colony, we're giving them a smaller space to keep warm, aren't we? Yes. Mm. Again, that's just food on there. I think, oh no, there's, there's actually a few eggs in there so we want to leave that one in. Okay. 
So that's the edge of the brood nest. She has started laying a little bit more the, the last few days. Again, there's, there's some eggs on here on both sides. So the queen, queen has actually started to expand mm -hmm. the brood nest quite a bit with the good spell of weather we've yeah. had over the last three or four days. Uh, and we've got sealed brood, unsealed brood, eggs, brood in all stages on that frame. So it's a little bit stronger than I thought, but mm -hmm. as I say, it it's, uh, has progressed a little bit. But still ideal for doing the uh, technique on a weaker colony. And there's the queen there. Oh. There's highly unlikely to be any queen cells in a colony of this size. We've got unsealed brood on that frame. A little bit more sealed brood and unsealed brood on that one as, on that side. Uh, quite a bit of pollen on that frame and a bit of sealed brood, so it's uh, it's good to, to to leave them some pollen in. You don't want to take all the all the pollen out. And again, the same on there. Now there's no brood on this frame, but there is a lot of pollen. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to leave that one in. Yeah. Even though you you could actually take that out and just leave the frames with brood on, so we've got there's only a small patch of eggs on those two frames. Yeah. So you've got one, two, three, four, five frames of brood, yeah. essentially, with a with a small patch of eggs on those two. Right, we've got the queen on this frame, and with this method, we actually transfer the queen into the top box. So you do that straight away, different from the other ones where we let her That's right, either yes. move or yes. do it a week later with sticking the, the queen straight in the top box. Yes, we, t we t just take that bit of brace comb off the bottom. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. we're going to put it in, into this top box. And the other important difference is that we're going to use drawn comb in this top box. So we make a space in between a few frames of drawn comb and put that in there. And the idea is that we move these frames up and we'll close the gaps up with dummy boards close yeah, the gaps up yeah. with dummy boards put our bailey board on okay and the brew box with the queen in okay. on top And essentially, we, we want to put the same number of frames in as, as is in the bottom box. So a mirror so we, image. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we're keeping the bees yeah. com, uh, compact mm -hmm. in that space. Um, now, if you don't have enough drawn comb, you can put some foundation in, but it's, it's a very good idea to yeah. have drawn comb at least either side yeah. of the frame with the queen on so that she has somewhere to lay. Mm -hmm. exactly. you're, not, you're not stopping the queen laying. Yeah. Um, so we're going to put another drawn comb there, just have a quick look down, see where we want to be. Right, so we want to be there with dummy boards. Mm. These frames of foundation can come out, we don't need those in. And we want uh, some more drawn comb in. That's about it actually. That's, uh, so that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames yeah. in the bottom, right. seven frames in the top, yep. and uh, dummy boards surrounding the outsides. And then we can put a clean crown board on top, and even though we've given them drawn comb, it's a good idea to feed. Okay. Um, probably won't need as much feed, because they haven't got the comb to draw, but mm. it's a good idea to give them some uh, some strong syrup again yeah. so I can see immediately because you put the queen up there it's going to start drawing bees from the bottom yes which took a week in that case it's going to take and what in a few hours or yeah yeah well the, the bees will come straight up they'll know where the queen is to come yeah. through the excluder um, the queen should be able to start laying in the adjacent combs right. very quickly because they get the heat from yeah. the bottom combs underneath yeah um, that's the portals of shrinking that colony to keep the heat 
Yeah, they keep Within walls that. in the colony, yes. Uh, yes. When a smaller space, top and bottom. Yes. Yes, you've only essentially got similar size, mm. similar number of frames as you'd have in a full brew box. Yeah. When the first hive, uh, we, the queen was moved after a week, but we put the queen straight in the, t the top here. Yes. What kind of check do we want to do a week later that's different from the other one? Right. In a week's time, yeah. the queen should have started laying on the adjacent yeah. frames. Yeah. So we can take that old frame out yeah. and put it back into the bottom box okay. and put one more frame of drawn comb in right. uh, into the top box. And, and in that way, we'll, we'll then just gradually build up the top box with new comb. Yeah. Now, if you don't have enough uh, drawn comb, then you, it's, it's okay to use some foundation. foundation. Which is important to keep the feed going, if yes. you're drawing the foundation. Yes. So as it shrinks the nest below, it expands That's right. to above. Yes, and, and again, within three weeks' time, you can take it, that bottom box away, because it's, uh, well, it'll be three weeks after the yeah. second week, so four weeks altogether. Yeah. So the key thing that with the, with the weak economy is, is reducing the, the, sh the size inside the box, top and bottom, so they're not heating that extra space and moving the queen up at the first instance, isn't it? Yes, yes, that's right. So do we have to do the same thing as we did with the other hive and close up this entrance? That's right, yes, we, we close the bottom entrance. Just give them a, a bit of smoke. Another key thing I've noticed you started with drawn comb in the top. Yes. Is there some, are there some things that we need to do with using drawn comb? Yes, it, it should be sterilised first. Um, a good way of getting good drawn comb is to use a brew box as a super uh, in the summer months and then extract those frames, uh, let the bees clean them out and then sterilise them over the winter period and then they're ready for use mm. in the following spring. If you look at Bee Base, the National Bee Unit website, there's a leaflet there on sterilising comb, and that's normally done with 80% acetic acid. Okay, so that's good. I mean, because you don't want to put dirty things back into them. Exactly. Because you've undermined the very thing you've been trying to do, give your bees good, clean comb. But that's been very interesting. Uh, the application of drawn comb, you can see it actually working, giving the queen something to do straight away. Yes. Which is different from the other ones, which they're kind of building the comb in advance of the queen, yes. queen's it, arrival. It's nice with a stronger colony to get them to draw that foundation out. Yeah. Um, it's valuable work that they do yeah. for you uh, during as part of the process. Um, but with a weaker colony, you don't want to give them that extra work. Yeah. You need to give them some, some drawn comb. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ivor. That's been really instructive. And I think people will find this video really useful if perhaps it's the first time they've ever done or trying to do a, a baby comb change. What's the, what's the key things that people need to take on board when they're going to start this process? Well, first of all, make sure that the colony is, is ready for it. Don't try and do it too early. Uh, and then make sure you have the, the, the equipment you need ready to hand. So do the preparation beforehand. Uh, make up your frames with foundation if you're doing a full comb change. Um, and uh, get your bailey board ready, things like that. And you can always refer to the, um, the BBK leaflet. It will give, on one side, it gives a pictorial version of, of how to do it. And on the other side, it goes step by step and tells you which, what equipment you need and, and when you should be doing the different manipulations. Right, because you can use that as a diary. You can write your dates on if it helps you. you know? Yeah, I suppose you could, yes. yes you yeah. know. Right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Good luck with everyone's Bailey comb changes. <laughs>